Sorry if I pronounced that really bad, but all right. So, I don't know what to call this segment. Like, what, the Generation Boogity Shoe Vinyl Sprinter Show, Johnny? Or prequel. What? That sounds good. The prequel show. The prequel show? Yeah. All right. Uh, just going to get out of Chuck's way here really quick. So, how did you guys form? Obviously, I'm pretty oh, sure you all met at school. Oh, um, actually, it started with uh, me and Aiden. We met in, what class was it? German, maybe? German. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I think it was German. Uh, we just... I found out he played the drums, and I asked him if he wanted to jam, and so we started jamming. Then I think we decided we wanted to get a singer in on that, and I knew Austin could sing. So All right. We got yeah, that girl. That's perfect. I All was right. in a previous band before, and I ended up just, I ended up quitting the band, and Craig was talking to me more about becoming the singer for Richard's Almanac, so that, that's, that's where it started. Um, I knew Shay. Um, I started, I was helping out uh, at an event for my brother's school, and noticed, remembered she played bass from middle school and asked her if she wanted to be the bassist of our band. So from then on it turned into Four Richards Almanac. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Um, so musical experience wise, let's just go through each of you starting from left to right because we read like that. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, I've been playing bass since about grade five and French horn since grade seven. All right. Uh, and how would you say this experiences have helped you as a musician in the factor of like, you know, octaves you can play? This is theory talk, sorry fellas, but uh, you know, like... Well, definitely with my, my understanding and my skills in theory, it definitely translates over to, you know, more complicated pieces that we want to do and it helps us write better and frankly, it makes us all better musicians. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Aiden, yourself? Um, I'm, I'm pretty much all self-taught. I uh, picked up the drums about seven years ago um, and started by playing metal because I was so hardcore back then. Uh, and from there I just kind of evolved into playing more blues and rock-based songs. And uh, since then I've also picked up guitar and keyboard, that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So, but you say you were self-taught. Now, you must have found some difficulties at first being self-taught, I'm guessing, or did you just... Are you the protege? <laughs> I... Yeah, uh, obviously it can be hard to, to... to find out what to play having been self-taught, but I just kind of looked things up as I went, and... Hello? It, uh... <laughs> it all... Hello? It all worked out. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Greg, yourself? Um, mm -hmm. I started actually on piano kind of that, in sometime in early elementary okay, school. Thanks. Um, right. I kind of lost interest in that around grade five, and from there I moved into guitar and actually clarinet around the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started on guitar lessons, I guess it was grade six. Um, so, I think, yeah, I've been doing that ever since. I started mostly just on acoustic, got into electric guitar about grade 8 or grade 9, and um, I started mostly hard rock stuff, but I think it was Aiden actually who got me more into the blues stuff, and being in the jazz band at high school, starting in grade 9, I got way into that stuff too. So. Okay, uh, how about yourself Austin, <laughs> just kind of going through? Well, um, I started um, playing actually the saxophone in grade 6. From then on, it started. And I picked up a bunch of different instruments, and I've always been a singer. Um, I can, you know, at home scream my lungs out alone in the shower or whatever you think. Um, but and then it just kind of started from there. I play rhythm guitar as well, so I picked up the guitar you know, a couple years ago and just kind of followed on from there. Got guitar lessons. Haven't had a music lesson in my life until this year, and honestly, it wasn't worth it because <laughs> I already had my voice so developed already. It was very good. So, I mean, it was the same thing every lesson. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So pretty much you're just like, I'm at this point where I don't really need lessons anymore. It's more yeah, self-development. It, it, it kind of started as I just kind of taught myself how to sing in an actual band and then had a couple of bands here and there. I mean, grade eight, I performed talent show and at the end of the year with a bunch of buddies and we butchered it, but it was still hilarious. And then, you know, from then on, I had another band that I was playing with and that didn't end well either. But... It realistically was just self-taught, and then from then on, I, yeah, just self-taught all the way through. 
Okay, so for sure though, this band has its own sound, which is awesome. That's what everybody looks for. You know, they don't want a cover band or anything like that. So you guys have a lot of, you know, unique kind of backgrounds towards music and it all sounds like it seems like it comes together quite well. So it's kind of like soulmates. Yeah, we've been <laughs> together for two years now, so there's been lots of bumps. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, once again, from left to right, starting with Shay and then ending with Austin, uh, what would you say is your favorite instruments? Like, you said you played the French horn and the bass. Which one did you prefer? <laughs> we already know Aiden loves the drums. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm definitely a bassist at heart, but a French horn in mind. So okay. I can't choose. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Aiden, for yourself, you've obviously you got you know, your love interest in drums. But is there any other instrument that you've ever picked up? I I love picking up new instruments, and the guys can vouch vouch for me there. I've picked up guitar, piano. I just picked up flute, uh, just for the fun of it. Any um, whistle? I I'm always up to picking up new instruments and trying new stuff out. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Craig, yourself? Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> can you please repeat the question? Can I buy a bottle? Um. <laughs> The question was like uh, more or less your favorite instrument. For example, Shay's was confused. Uh, <laughs> Aiden was drums, and Austin we haven't gotten to. Uh, my favorite instrument to play would be guitar. Uh, the guitar. Yeah. What uh, what makes you so interested in playing the guitar? Is it like the unique sound that you can make come from it, or? I'm not really sure. You just, just love it. I just love to play it. Such blind love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin. Well, I mean it. Totally depends on what you, what I'm going for. Realistically, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm more for the music than I am for anything else. Um, if I can pick up a guitar and have someone have certain feelings off of just playing guitar, then that's what I'm going for. But if I can have that with my voice, then yeah, for sure. Um, if I was to pick my favorite, realistically, I would absolutely, utterly love to buy myself a tenor saxophone. So. Well, I remember how much you loved the sax when we played together in the band. Yeah, and <laughs> school band play. that is. Still play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, through these experiences, uh, how many gigs have you guys done? We can just have anybody talk. <laughs> Anywhere in between five and ten real ones, I'd say. Oh, well, there's been lots of smaller ones in between there. It's a gig's a gig. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't know, I don't think we've been keeping track of them very closely. <laughs> well, let's just say seven. Keep it safe. Seven? Alright. Um, it must be more than ten. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably more than ten, realistically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, out of these gigs, which one's going to be, or was your favorite? Uh, we played the ranch last year. It's uh, Black Mountain Ranch. It's just across the border. Um, and we opened for a cover band there. and. I had a lot of fun at that show. That was one of our best shows, but also winning the 2013 Battle of the Bands at Abbey Senior Secondary, that was probably our proudest moment. Yeah, for sure, yeah. It's yeah. always good to have that extra reach around your peers as well. Yeah. I got to see that one. I, I thought the other, uh, the metal band was pretty good, but I guess uh, you stepped up onto the plate too. Both of them actually hurt themselves during that show. I think oh, both, that was both so the singers actually smacked themselves in the face with the mic and trying made to their do, face bleed. Trying to do like and super cool whips and stuff, just smacking themselves in the face. It ha it happens when you're a metalhead. Like yeah, you just like fall on the ground and just like spaz out. It's a it's, it's, it's part of the song though if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think our best show um, was just recently we played once again at Ivy Senior Secondary. It was probably our best. So, yeah, it, I thought it was. I thought it was our best. That was just recent. That was, you know, about a month ago. Rock the rotunda is what they called it. Rock the rotunda. That's pretty creative, actually. Uh -huh. It was kind of the same. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of the same as Battle of the Bands last year. So. Oh, okay. Same different, or same style, or whatever. Just different format. Yeah, it was kind of like a, a, every band got a day and got a half hour to play whatever they wanted to, and then they voted it on the last day. It was all right. All right, uh, Johnny. What did you? Okay. Did you want yeah. To talk sir, about sorry for distracting anybody. I was trying to subtly get permission from Dakota to ask you a question. As people often say, I'm not very subtle, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious. 
just because you mentioned you went right across the border. And I'm just curious because I've had my troubles trying to cross the border, even though they have nothing on me except my last name. And it bothers them for some reason. They always want to give me an, 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 an uh, erectile examination. I want but to blame them. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, playwright Andy, I'm just curious. Did, did you have any troubles or any... Did, did they look at you funny when you were crossing the border? Did you have to like go in and... Like, did you get interviewed or anything like that? Uh, no, we didn't. No. We actually just went down because we didn't get paid for this gig. We we did it out of the our hearts, so we just took the drum kit down, we took our guitars down. The border guards, they just asked what we were doing, we said we were going to play some songs on the campfire, which we did, and then we also played the show. Oh, okay. So Less dramatic than I was hoping for, but that's cool. I'm glad, and I'm, I'm happy for you, because I wish I could get across the border that easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just because you're such a good-looking guy, John. Yeah, it must be. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg. Favorite gig? I already said my favorite game. Oh, well, this is just awkward now. Let's ask Aiden. Um, well, we've had lots of great kicks. Actually, the Rock the Rotunda I was as sick as a dog, so I have to disagree with Austin there because I felt awful. <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely Battle of the Bands was the most rewarding. Uh, felt really good to, to win, and it's not about winning, it's not about... Um, you know, getting all the money and stuff. It's it's about playing, and uh, to be recognized for that was very rewarding. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, are you guys like super excited for Sunday though? Like, oh yeah. You think it's gonna be a great gig? You oh, guys yeah. pumped? Definitely. Super. It says monotone. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. Craig and Aiden are kind of like Wade and Garth. You really have to get them <laughs> going before they actually start to perk up. <laughs> you excited? Oh, yeah, awesome. I'm definitely excited. I'm ready for it. You said yeah. monotone? <laughs> <laughs> I said with monotone. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. Put me on right now. On the radio. Yeah. Uh, so, Andy, is there any questions that you want to ask? I kind of left you to setting up. I'm just curious what you guys did with, um, after the battle... Battle of the bands, you got studio time, right? You got to record an album or something? <laughs> we got one free song from Sweet Sound Studios that we still haven't used yet. Oh, so what are you planning on doing? What What are you planning on recording? Do you have any thoughts or ideas? Or well, we have our album, The Path, which we are still, it's still kind of in the works. We have things to fix, so we'll probably take one of our better songs off The Path and do it there. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, with a gig, right, what kind of audience do you guys hope for with your type of music? I think it definitely depends on what we're playing or the where the show is, for that matter. Uh, probably the biggest one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah! Yeah, definitely. Good answer. He said monotone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, well, how, um, you, nobody can ever expect the crowd to come out and, um, behave the way you want it to, but how has, how have you started off with, like, a crowd that's not excitable, then work your way up to getting them pumped? Um, what are your secrets to a good show? Having my little sister, Shanti, <laughs> come and pump up the crowd. Every single show we do. Every single show, she's the loudest one to scream. That five-year-old littlest scream you'll hear, that's her. Yeah? I don't really think there's any secret you start with on the crowd. Start, okay. start, start. I think if we're enjoying the music and we're enjoying it, then the crowd starts enjoying it more as well. Just gonna lay on the chill. Is that, is that even with the, uh, even with people who don't listen to your, the kind of music that you pr make, produce? Um, it's, I think that's, it's kind of weird in that regard. Um, we've always kind of tended toward more of a classic rock type of feel with the covers. So um, that's helped us out with sort of an older crowd there, which will probably be good for tomorrow at the flea market. There, so. mm -hmm. uh, usually, I don't know, every time I've been there, there's been lots of more middle-aged people there as well. So I think we'll that'll help us out there. Looking for the gadgets that they grew up with. <laughs> you guys still sell analog? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me! Johnny, go home. We're <laughs> tricks, man. Stay where you are, but go home. <laughs> Digital is way better. Yeah, Johnny, how do you feel about that? 
I'm feeling very hurt at the moment, thank you. You know what, I find that like CDs, they have a really warm, natural sound to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah you feel that, do you? Yeah, okay, I, yeah I, you I know just... what, I really don't, so, so there. They have a and tendency to work um, half the time on one channel. That's like half the deals for double the price. Yeah, oh good, so you, you have fun with those CDs that are gonna be phased out while vinyl will still be growing in popularity. You know what else is growing in popularity? Illegal downloads. Yes. With professional DJs, I know. And Poor Richard's Almanac. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, Poor Richard's Almanac. That's at the top of the charts. Right now, hey, are you guys ever gonna... Are you aiming to ever put anything on vinyl? Or do you care? Everything will be on vinyl. Yes! Uh, think, uh, so me and Aiden have a pretty avid record collection, <coughs> I'd say. And Shay. Um, so... Yeah! Yeah, I'm pretty much the only one who doesn't have a single record to my name. Austin's just like, I don't even know vinyl. <laughs> you're, not, you're not missing what out. What is that? <laughs> Where's the vinyl, man? I have a fair amount of cassettes, though, so we'll start with that. Oh, uh, just to check your age, what do you do with the pencil and the cassette? You spin it and wind it? Not a boy. I'm proud. <laughs> That's right, guys. You can listen to you, you poor know, Richard's yeah, Almanac. He's... Re rewind CDs and cassettes. Not CDs. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually supposed to stab it. Stab it with a pencil? Yeah. So you want to really just wreck the cassette and throw it out. But, uh... Not our cassettes. Put Andy on the spot there, so now he's confused. <laughs> uh, he's kind of like a deer in the headlights. But regardless... <laughs> Uh, what kind of songs do you think you guys are going to play tomorrow? Like, did you already figure out the set? It's a, about a four-hour set. You guys can obviously repeat after two-hour mark because people are just walking back and forth. And then most of the customers of the flu market, they forget what happened two hours ago. Kind of like Goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, actually, we had set up an electric set to be about an hour or so and an acoustic set to be about an hour or so. so. All right, that's perfect. Um... Now, with your music, is there like a deeper meaning behind a lot of songs, or is it just, is it like uh, more entertaining, or do you guys have a mix of both, where obviously you want to be entertaining, but like, are you focused just on entertainment, or focused... Meaning originals, or original band covers? Yeah, yeah, just like original, like, your original pieces that you guys wrote, you know, musically and lyrically. Um, I... Well, my influences are definitely a lot more into the deeper meaning, and obviously I enjoy an exciting song and, you know, to pump up the crowd, that's always fun, but uh, just my my writing style specifically is very, I, I want that meaning that people kind of question what's being said and, you know, kind of make that judgment of what does this mean, and just I, I like to make the listener think. Oh, okay, so basically you have a song, right, and obviously the listener would listen, and then afterwards you're hoping that they kind of reflect on the lyrics and go, what does this mean to me? Kind of like take their own? Exactly. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Aiden does most of the writing in the band. I mean, we all help out, but Aiden does most of the writing. Oh, okay, so Aiden's the, uh, he's the pencil pusher of the band. <laughs> Always sure. in his office. <laughs> yeah, we, we could all come up with nicknames for the entire band. We can start that. Yeah, just pencil pusher Aiden, uh, quiet Shay in the corner. No. <laughs> just kidding, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I think we'll call Shay the enforcer, maybe. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> just the fact that she'll whip us she all knows. shape. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can figure that out. Pulling a Rihanna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we have fun here in the Generation Boogity Shoe Blue Show final spinner. I don't know what to call it anymore. That sounds good. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Andy, why don't you hit us up with a promo and let's take a little bit of a... See, Andy, if it were a record, you would be having this problem. That's true. See? There, back at you. He's a dear guy. He can't speak any English at all. And look at him now. No, no Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you declare it because you're not the one talking the most. Seconds. Talk the least. I'm such a shy guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm so shy. Uh huh. That's why you're a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Generations Z show. I'm broadcasting from 
0.7 FM to the Fraser Valley from UFE. That was really mixed up, but I love it. Uh, you guys were talking about a funny story, but Andy's trying to take the mic from me, so we're going to let that happen. Uh, well, this is the Generation Z show, and we're, act we're finally starting. This is the official show. So, um, for the listeners that tune in at 5, could you guys introduce yourselves quickly? Hi, I'm Shay, and I'm the bassist for Porridge's Almanac. My name is Aiden Edwards, and I'm the drummer. My name's Craig, and I play guitar. And my name's Austin, and I'm the singer. What does Johnny play? Is he part of the band now? <laughs> Johnny plays the dancing. The d yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just the dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Different Johnny. Johnny. Johnny likes to show up. Oh, yeah, that's funny, Different actually. Johnny. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that in just one minute, but... So, Johnny, with you, do you have much, like, Greek dancing that you could show off right well, now? Uh, no, 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 no. I only do it professionally. Oh. So, and um, no, I can only do it in my white skirt. Mm. How, how long is that white skirt, by the way? Um, it goes to, well, just below the knees, I believe. Shame. Uh, I, went, I went to a Greek club once um, in Greece, and they were doing belly dancing, so... Uh, oh yeah, I do that too all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to see Johnny in the in the clubs all the time. Yeah. Anyway, so we have a full uh, studio today. We have like seven, eight people. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and you should have seen it, uh, if you guys could possibly see it, which you might be able to... It, We'll be on YouTube, we'll get the links out near the end of the show, but regardless. Uh, <laughs> we had, who did we all have? We had Chuck, you, me, you being Andy, me being Dakota. We had Shay, Aiden, Craig, Austin, Johnny, Aaron, my girlfriend Danny hanging out in the back not doing much. And yeah, it was a full, it was a full house for sure. It got really hot. <laughs> oh yeah, it's kind of a club in here. So tell us, what brings you here? Miss Poor Richard's Almanac fan? Miss. <laughs> Mister? Miss. Thank I you. prefer doctor, actually. <laughs> if we just want to rock and promote our message that we're playing tomorrow at the flea market at 10 o'clock. Okay. That's cool. Uh, what other message do you want to send? What What makes your music musically awesome? The fact that it's musical. I don't think. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So you guys had a funny story that we were talking about when we were off air about this uh, talent show, I believe it was. Oh, um, yeah, actually, uh, Austin couldn't make it to be singer for the talent show, and we we really wanted to play there. I pull it up too much at this. So, um, I, so I was gonna sing, and I, I'm not a very good singer at that point. Um, well, we made it work. We made it work. We had to like change the key of the song a whole ton. Really, you guys just kind of like produced his voice through like a auto tune and that's how he <laughs> yeah Stefan and that's how they won. Oh by the way, uh the vinyl spinner show used his auto tune because vinyl just doesn't have that warm sound. Yeah that's right. And cowbell. Yeah, sing cowbell. Yeah. So anyways, while we're playing this talent show, we have one of our friends from high school, Jonathan, and we have him come do this strange dance we still don't know what he did. I could perform it later. Um, we'll set the camera out in the hall and I'll just do it. Yeah, Johnny is is notorious for dancing. Uh, one lunch, he he actually danced in the in the foyer of the school and he got like five six dollars for it. It was the funniest thing. No, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure he got more than that. I I actually have a video of that on YouTube that I could probably link in this video later when it comes out. But like. No, I, I vividly remember they're standing there with my iPod, probably red-faced, because it was just so ridiculous. So and people... provocative. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brown was provocative. We had uh, Bryce Park, awesome guy. Oh, God. He was, uh, he was twerking. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, oh, Mohit Sharma. Not to embarrass anybody, but this is just hilarious, and they're probably going to get a kick out of this. But Mohit Sharma was, like, making it rain, per se. Oh, yeah. <laughs> throwing fake money at him. Not yeah. like actual fake money, but just like, I guess, air guitar money. <laughs> if that would be the uh, the words to use. Johnny, correct me on that. I really have nothing to correct you on. Sounds good to me. Uh, all right. I guess it's not etc. Uh, <laughs> You're right. That I would correct you on. <laughs> Austin? I, I was just going to say Johnny, Jonathan's quite the character. Uh, he tends to be the character of everything. We, we laugh at him all the time. Yeah, for sure, like, 
He's definitely a guy that I enjoyed grade 10 just like chilling, or I guess it was grade 11 in the guitar room just playing guitar. It's funny. He's, he's an odd guy. What's he up to these days anyway? You guys know? <laughs> a whole lot of Tumblr. <laughs> Tumblr. <laughs> you sound uh, you sound scared when you said that. What is he I don't posting know. and reblogging? Oh, uh, lots of crazy it. stuff. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It's a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, you just have to ask him. He's. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna give me examples, and I might cry a little. <laughs> I'll cry every day because Jonathan. Cry every time. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you guys see yourselves in about like ten years or just down the road per se, the long run? Well, ultimately, I see us being kings and queen of the world. Oh, well, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll have some songs on the radio. Maybe do a tour of Canada or the U.S. I just, I hope that we're all friends still in ten years, because sometimes I just want to punch Craig in the mouth. <laughs> it makes me so angry. But I really value these guys, so hopefully we're still together in some sense. That's good, that's good. Do you guys uh, pick up any projects at all? Like, uh, different projects individually? For example, with the casinos we had, uh, I believe it was the lead singer doing R&B on the side that he wanted to get into more, like a side project. Yeah, uh, Craig recently was part of a youth orchestra. That, uh, yeah, so talk about that, um, dude. Yeah, I played guitar for uh, Shrek musical in Chilliwack. Oh, okay. And I believe they're doing that again this year. Uh, they're doing the Adams Family this year. Oh, are you gonna? Yeah, I'm gonna play guitar on that again. Oh, that's awesome. So obviously you got a lot of range with your guitar, like doing different themes and different types of genres. It seems um, like. Yeah, I try and be a very well well-rounded musician. I guess I started in hard rock, um, got into blues, and then got way into jazz there for a while. And my guitar teacher for the past five years or so is he's a hair metal dude. So that's been okay. cool. Yeah. Um, so um. Where do you see yourself down the road? Um, hopefully still playing guitar. I plan to never stop doing that, but uh, hopefully the band is still together 10 years from now and we're still making music and having fun. Okay, sorry to skip it there, Aiden. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so where do you see yourself down the road with drumming with Almanac? I'm just going to call you guys that for short, sorry. Just say PRA. PRA is our PRA? public name. Right. Um, public relations announcement, got it. <laughs> uh, I think as long as we're together in some way, shape, or form, I'll be happy because, uh, you know, these guys are my best friends, and even if we're, we don't make it anywhere and we just play, you know, at a bar once a week or whatever, that's, that's fine by me as long as we're all playing. Well, you gotta search somewhere, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Nobody just has one gig and then I'll, well, I guess maybe some people. <laughs> yeah. The lucky Cyrus. Aerosmith. The lucky people definitely have some gigs where they just get famous off the bat. Johnny might know a little bit about that, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I like how he, like, he's just like... You know, that's awesome. <sighs> no, Dakota. No. <laughs> So Austin, where do you see yourself down the road? You gonna be singing? Yeah, I I definitely be singing. I don't think I'm ever gonna give that up, no matter what. And same with the guitar. I don't want to ever give up music. Music is my passion. Okay. So do you ever see yourself like singing with Miley Cyrus down the road? Maybe Justin Bieber, a little bit for kicks. No. Come on. No. Come on. Nah. <laughs> I know you listen to them all the time. No. <laughs> One Direction. Uh. <laughs> uh I'm just curious because this is along these lines. Some bands. They they start off, they're really big and everything, and they're great. And then they kind of start drifting apart. So when I hear you guys talking, well, we always want to play music, is it more about playing music together, or do you think, and this is maybe even a philosophical question, if you guys start, you know, not getting along so well anymore, for example, the police did this for their last album, would you ever consider still recording an album but everybody kind of report records right. their own bit in their own studio and you never even see each other during the recording process we're going to avoid that uh if we start to hate each other then we probably won't play with each other but we're really good at i think resolving the issues and sometimes it takes time but we're pretty good at that we haven't really had a bunch of issues as a band, realistically, as, you know, everybody's mad at each other and nobody wants to talk to anybody. That doesn't tend to happen. 
The only time I can remember that we were really mad at each other was the week before Jam and Jubilee, and we were super stressed because I was gone all summer. And a good story. I have. I have three bases. I now have two because I took one that I've had for seven or eight years and just dropped it and I've completely shattered the bottom. She was trying to play one riff over and over and over and over and over and could not get it right and it just ended up in literally her rage quitting and chucking the bass to the floor. It was it was an ugly, and ugly time. At this point we were working in a in a garage, so it was definitely a cement floor. <laughs> and a wooden base. I find that we have two different stories going on. Shay says that she dropped it, <laughs> and Austin says you practically threw it. Shay is the only person who will say that she dropped it. I, I did. It was a hard drop to the ground. But Above her more, head. <laughs> more of the story is with force. Even that we were upset with each other, we all went up to Everett Park where Aiden used to live with a giant tub of ice cream, and we just well, sat. I cried, and we all just talked everything out, and you know, it doesn't matter if you absolutely flipping mad at somebody or you're mad at your instrument or you're mad at whatever like as long as you can take the time to breathe and work it out you're golden pony boy <laughs> thank you outsiders <laughs> so yeah for sure you guys maybe had that one problem i could imagine that you know it's coming up to a gig you guys are a little bit frustrated trying to get everything organized. It's funny because I think before every gig, I tend to get sick a week before. <sighs> well, that's every perfect. every gig. Every, every and it's gig. not even it's. I'm surprised I'm not sick right now. I have a bit of a sore throat, but I'm not sick. It's just because we've been working on music. Too much stress. Yeah, it's, it's it's the stress of sitting at a desk all day. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but with the. Uh, you guys raging, obviously, that could develop. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It was a bit of a rage. I think if you stick any group of people in a room for long enough, they're going to have some problem with something along the line there. Like a cabin. And he's really bad for that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a cabin fever type ideal, you know. You know what? People. When you're in a band, you share everything. Good memories, bad memories. Secrets. Underwear. Even <laughs> retainers sometimes. <laughs> Can we elaborate That's on that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first the first month we were in the band together, I we came up with this saying like you share everything in a band, and then I have I hyped in because both Craig and Austin used to wear retainers, and I did too, and it's like including retainers, and that's just been the quote all along. I like how you added that little bit of like this be kind of like spit retainer yeah, uh, like yeah retainer noise you like that don't you <laughs> oh that's nice <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so with the sunday gig though what do you hope to have out of the outcome other than obviously the money <laughs> uh, i think we just want to have a good time and we want the crowd to have a good time and if we can accomplish that i think um satisfied. Alright, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, I guess we started kind of odd with Craig, but we'll just do a weird circle. I, I think I think realistically we just want to play. We just want to get out there and expose ourselves to the crowd and just get some more interest in our music. Alright, that's awesome. That should be every band's goal, is to, you know, that. <laughs> uh, Aiden? Uh, just the experience. Um, you know, more time on stage to shine. Exactly to you know be able to be able to play better, and it's just a, in a sense it's practice for the more gigs to come. And at the same time, it's to us it's the gig. We gotta go out there and play well. And I know. It. Yeah, that's good. Good confidence. Uh, shake yourself. Johnny, you hold on a minute. You stay. Right there. I am waving. I'm just <laughs> waving. I like to play. You like to play. <laughs> Wayne's World quote. Yeah, no, um, we just want to have a good time. want to watch some old people bob their heads and say, hey, that's the stuff I used to listen to. And, you know, just bring positive vibes, pretty much. Yeah, Maybe those eat some popcorn. kids and their rock and roll. <laughs> Rebel child. To you, Johnny. Darn kids in their iPods. And their vinyl and spinners. <laughs> and another philosophical question. What if tomorrow somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, I'm from Sony Records and I'm going to sign you right now. Billboard charts with me, blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, 
for sure that has been an opportunity for some bands that have played the Sunday gig before. Not maybe Sony, but you know maybe small producers. But it's a step up, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my concern is how you guys feel being signed. I'm, I'm just being hypothetical. Oh yeah, because, yeah, for sure. Um, Sony doesn't come to Abbas Rocket, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Go ahead. Um, we actually, when we played Jam and Jubilee last year, we actually had a guy approach us and wanting to um, produce some of our music. Unfortunately, um, being you know just about a year in the band, a lot of the shows that we have done, we have done just to get the experience. We haven't gotten a lot of money in the bank for the band. So he was asking us to pay. It wasn't he was signing us. We, he, we, he wanted to produce our music, but he wanted us to pay a fair amount of money, and we did not have it. Unfortunately, like uh, a couple grand, a couple ten thousand. Uh, I think grand. he was talking fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen. Whoa, okay, that's spicy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not steep because it's producers, right? You know, they expect a lot of money. They're trying to live too. Some of them are trying to do more than live. But regardless, uh, yourself, Greg. Same uh, question. I think it'd be pretty cool to get signed tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that'd, be, that'd be unexpected. Um, we'll sign you right now. Done. Sweet. Generation Z. Uh, producer label, I guess. We actually produce a little bit, so on the side, yeah. If you right. guys are interested, that that can happen, Johnny. Well, let me let me just rephrase the question, kind of take it to a different level. Are you more concerned with producing your music and being, say, on in the top forty of the campus charts, or would you rather be a big time group with a major label and be listened to corporate radio? Awesome. I, I think the biggest thing is we want to get our message out there and the only way to do that is to get our originals on on air realistically yeah, and it, it really isn't so much about the money and I, that's a common understanding between the four of us if that's not what it is about it is about sending the message and like like what I was saying when with uh, the original stuff that I want I specifically want to make people think about the song and if I can do that on a grander s scale then that would be great. And it also, it doesn't matter whether it's the top 40 on the campus or the top 40 in the world, as long as we are having a good time, that's all that matters. So you're not like some of these kids are like, oh man, I'm never going to be in the top 40 of a mainstream radio station, I'm just going to be on the campus charts because that's more credible. You're not like that, you're just, hey, wherever it is, whatever it is, I want to be heard. Exactly. That's I, who we are. I can't say music for me personally has ever been about making money. It's always, I just really enjoy playing music and sharing that with people is what I'm going for more than trying to get signed or trying to uh, make lots of money. I think one, one thing I said before, it had to do with giving the message out and having having somebody feel something from what we're playing. I think that was the biggest thing that we've all come to. Um, I'd much rather go to a show that we're not getting paid for, not get anything for it, and have, for example, have people broken down in tears from something that we've played. I, that gives me more of a sense than, you know, money in my pocket, what's that going to do? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think you can't take it to the grave, so you know. Yeah, that is true. The only thing that lives on is what you guys can leave behind, money comes up and down, inflation, etc. Anyway, Andy, you have the song ready, I believe. Yep, it took me a while to set up, but uh, let's give you some radio airtime. This is The Love by Poor Richard's Almanac. Show. And here it goes. From UFB to the Fraser Valley on 101.7 FM. I'm Dakota Leslie. I'm Andy Lee. I'm Shay. And Craig. And Austin. And Dre <laughs> <laughs> Johnny K. Johnny, you're supposed to speak in the microphone, not either. <laughs> Sorry. It, it's just because every time he talks, everyone can hear him uh, without a microphone. I'll, so stop, you I'll, I'll microphone, just stop using a microphone. How's that? Just start yelling really, really like. Okay, I will. Okay. <laughs> and it's what are media, not what is media. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's internet joke, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, Shay wanted to bring up cats. Don't know why, but let's go talk about that, apparently. Um, I love I've, cats. I've always wanted to rename the band uh, Craig and the Cool Cats. Yes. And they're not up for it, but I think it's a good idea. I think so, too. 
And not like Craig with the C and Cats with the C. They have to have K's. K's. Yeah. K's. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of uh, at the end of Cats, instead of an S, it'd be a Z. Oh, fuck. Or a that's line. original. And every vowel will have like umlauts over it. Yes. So like yes. Side note: umlauts are a part of the German language. <laughs> <laughs> Many languages, actually. Really? Which is where Craig and Aiden met in German class, apparently. There you go. Yeah. Cool. See, it all it all ties. Yeah. That is life, apparently. Yeah, we're just kidding. We're not going to change the band name. Uh, <laughs> the, the plan somewhere down the road, I think, was to release an album of just where, instead of yes. playing instruments and singing, we just made cat sounds. <laughs> That's yeah. actually how we decided to cover Don't Let Me Down, is that Craig and I were going to run away from the band and become our own little solo act with a cat organ. So, just it's, it's like a normal organ except made of cats. So every time you like, you'll press a cat's belly and it'll meow so softly. So when you say "Don't let me down," how did that even twist into cats? <laughs> um, I think uh, don't meow. let me meow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, even better. Yeah, <laughs> meow just uh, morphed into my go-to sound effect and for like. Well, because it sounds like a cat, but it can also sound like a guitar. That that tends to be what Craig tests the mic with. He'll con constantly just say meow, meow, meow until we get the levels right and all that kind of stuff. Or if or if for somebody forgets lyrics, we'll just start meowing the rhythm instead. Well, that's that's um. That's, do you guys do that during gigs? I should ask actually. Yeah, all the time. No. All the time. <laughs> it doesn't. No. <laughs> Craig's like, oh no. You'll no. see it on Sunday and at the Agri Fair. Don't worry. Oh. Even better. <laughs> Find the mystery meow and you'll get the prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that? Kind of like uh, what radio stations do? They'll play a song and then they'll just like whisper like, money, am <laughs> money amounts. It's like five hundred dollars. But you guys will just be like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the prize is a free cat. Well, perfect. Yeah. And you have to take care From of it. From the streets. <laughs> <laughs> we don't condone stealing cats, everyone. They make sure they're strays. They watch it for a couple of days <laughs> in their car, just like, there it is again. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this one's a keeper. <laughs> I like how it's missing badges of fur. <laughs> <laughs> That's character. <laughs> That's character, yeah. What do you want to name Patchy? <laughs> Patches. Patches. Uh, so, I guess you guys aren't going to rename your band. That's a shame. Craig the Crazy Cats. Craig cool and cats. the Cool Cats. The cool cats, yeah. That's actually kind of funny because I know in my room I have a picture that says "cool cat" with K's, it's so exactly it's cool like that, it's cool and it's cats. a cat with sunglasses on. Did you? Where did you get that? I have no idea. Because me and me and Aiden used to go thrift store shopping all the time, and there was this uh, picture up in the exactly thrift store. Exactly how you describe. Exactly how you just. Does it have uh, black and white stripes and it's all black and white? Uh, I think. Fairly. So. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it's probably the same picture. <laughs> and we went back to go get it later, and someone had bought it. Was Dakota. It, it was probably you, was me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you're welcome. Do you guys want it for your cover art when it's uh, Craig and the Cool Cats? <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll have to ask you when we get there. Oh, no, no. Just take it. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll deliver it to you guys. FedEx and all that. Yeah, don't worry about the B&E. We'll just, don't, don't bother delivering it. We'll just break in and take it. That, that works, too. That's perfect. Five-finger discount. <laughs> uh, so I guess your cat direction's kind of ended now. Yeah. Let's talk about dogs. What's your opinions on dogs? <laughs> See, in the Generation Z show, we like to talk about serious topics, and today it's dogs. So think about it. Think, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> be careful though, because your ideas and opinions might be too controversial, and it might offend people about dogs. I think people need to love their dogs and care about them more, as opposed to. Jerky jerks. Like. Jerky jerks? Like yeah. Teriyaki or original? Original. That's perfect. <laughs> but, anyways, like, don't be a mean person. Let <clears throat> your dog sit on the couch. Let your dog sleep on the floor. Don't force him to be outside all the time. Like, that's rude. Be nice to your dogs. <laughs> and that's Cheyenne Cats. <laughs> Do Our dogs! dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I still have cats on the mic. <laughs> Dogs are people, and apparently cats, too. <laughs> and in India, dolphins are announced as a being that is similar to human in intelligence. So they treat them kind of like a human. Uh, on the topic of dogs, Back Craig, to the, uh, Craig 
unfortunately, has the most annoying <laughs> rat in the world. Sassy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now, when you say rat, do you mean like a chihuahua? Because that's like, commonly what it's referred to as. Uh, it's part chihuahua. There we go. So it's part rat. Her yeah. name so is Sassy. Rat. She's her the name most is, annoying yeah, her thing. Her name is Sassy. So you, it's funny because you walk in the door. She won't bark when you walk in. You go to leave, and she will nip at your feet. Goes berserk. <laughs> not when, not when you're coming in. Like you're not intruding. Just come on in. You're not allowed to leave, though. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pretty bad. But I got to take selfies with Craig's dog once, so that wasn't too bad. Oh okay, so there's always good experiences with dogs and selfies. That's perfect. Did you ever like put makeup on it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I know. <laughs> does uh does Sassy make a really good duck face? By the way, I'm I'm intrigued now. She tried to bite me in the photo, so maybe. <laughs> there we go. Were picture. you making a duck face? No, I was making my deer in the headlights face that I usually do. Oh okay. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know. <laughs> what does that mean? You're just like deer in the headlights hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's usually hashtag. What are you doing, Shay? <laughs> Now, is this you taking photos of yourself, or other people just finding you I zoning think, out? I think that defines selfies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I usually take them myself. Oh. Okay, well, you just find yourself in confused states, and you're like... Oh, <laughs> oh perfect. Yeah, it's it's a normal thing for me. Mm. Do you have the rule of thirds applied to your selfies? <laughs> nope, because I hate photography. That's awesome, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, how do you feel about dogs, though? Especially sassy, I suppose. <sighs> Sassy and I have grown a really special bond. Um, yeah, just, you know, he, I don't think the dog likes me, but I like the dog, and, you know, it. we, we kind of get along sometimes, but I don't like it. <laughs> so, no, we don't have a good relationship. <laughs> Craig, Craig, you need to do your best right now to defend your dog. Your dog is helpless. It, it can't speak for itself, and all these people are offending your dog, Sassy. Uh, I, I what are you going to do? I bigger dog. <laughs> uh, I, I'd say I prefer bigger dogs, too. I didn't. I wanted a bigger dog. Um, fortunately, we, uh, I don't know, parents didn't want one of them. Dogs, I, it's getting really old now. I think it's like 13 or 14 or something. Yeah, she so limps. It's kind of sad. Yeah, she and messed up her leg the other day. Blind. I think she's going senile, actually. But a little bit more rabid now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got that awkward limp, so it chases yeah. you like a zombie or something. Yeah, yeah. sassy Weird. with a twist. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted ankle, that is. Uh, <laughs> Shay, were you gonna say something? You leaned into the microphone. I actually just wanted to crack my neck. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I hate it when people yeah. do this to me. Craig, back to you. Uh, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I really like big dogs, actually. I've always really... I, I say I prefer dogs to cats, actually. <laughs> you can't be our guitarist anymore. <laughs> well, fine. Fine! You can keep your cats. Good! I, I sense... I sense hostility. It's not going to work out for a 10-year career. <laughs> oh, it will. Don't worry. This no, happens all the time. That's what it's going to be, is a 10-year career. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't get offended to the viewers and listeners. Viewers for the camera there. <laughs> uh, we're on the radio. You can't see me. But as always, on the Generations Dead show, we're all naked. So it's a tradition. Andy, why don't you tell us about how this tradition started? It goes way back to my ancestors, E. Oh. You almost knocked my teeth out there. Um, well, basically, the reason why we sit naked in the radio sta <laughs> station because we, it's a radio. People don't see us, so it's all right. We can hang loose, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, hang loose. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You're wondering about your ancestors, right? I don't want to know what you know about my ancestors right now. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> Andy has night terrors from what he knows about my ancestors. Hey. Uh, <laughs> so, our, or sorry, I can't talk right now. Uh, I'm assuming that a lot of you are pet owners. So that's good for everybody to know, apparently. Actually, I'm not. Neither am I. Oh, well. Nor no, am I. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can tell, it's only Craig that might be the most caring in this group with this monotone sass. <laughs> what sass? <laughs> it's all monotone. I don't think there can be sass when you're monotone. It was sarcasm. <laughs> so, Craig, why don't you tell us more about your dog and description? I want to... Uh, it's a very blonde dog. Blonde? 
got, uh, I guess it's more of a long haired dog. It's, I think it's crossed with a Shih Tzu. Mm. Mm. Perfect combo. <laughs> Nothing but yappy. Yeah. <laughs> very, <laughs> very, very yappy. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> now, what do you feed your dog? Let's get into detail about this. Uh, I feed it dog food. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it on a steady diet of dog food. <laughs> and water. Do you use wet or dry? Both. Oh, oh, oh mm. <laughs> Your dog's spoiled. Yeah. No wonder it's, it's so fat. sassy. And, and it's fat? Yeah, it's a fat chihuahua. It's overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Not is like the limp from the fact that it can't lift it? <laughs> <laughs> or is the no, limp it's from not, it's something not that, It's not that fat, it's just kind of overweight. Oh, okay. Well, uh, speaking of dogs, we have Don't Let Me Down queued up. Um, is it covered by Poor Richard's Almanac um, of a, the Beatles song? So, you guys have anything you want to talk about on that right before we get started? This okay. song was inspired by mine and Craig's cat organ. That's how we even ended up covering it in the first place. All right. Well, uh, this is Don't Let Me Meow by <laughs> Poor Richard's uh, Almanac. Let's go for it. Well, you just heard um, Don't Let Me Down by Poor Richard's, Richard's Almanac. Almanac. PRA. And they're here joining us on the Generation Z show on 101.7 FM, broadcasting from the Fraser Valley to. Oh, sorry. You, from, broadcasting from UFB to the Fraser Valley. Yeah, but you're still. We are technically broadcasting from the Fraser Valley to the Fraser Valley. We are in the Fraser Valley. So you're. We you're just correct, want to be more specific. You're correct on both accounts. Great. I'm always right. Yes, you are. I just really uh, quickly wanted to ask Johnny a quick question Ooh. about uh, J-Man. Oh, J-Man, that his, guy. And uh, his recent disappearance, apparently. Well, uh, okay, long story fairly short. I You're was... a liar. <laughs> <laughs> My show has been on for just over five years. I don't think so. Would... Okay, well, it's been around there. At the beginning, I was playing a fair amount of reggae music, but then I moved on to other things, playing soul jazz, playing 80s music, and now I'm back to playing my top 40 remixes most of the time. No reggae except crappy top 40 renditions of reggae, right? Like magic with an exclamation mark, ooh. Oh. Anyway, no <laughs> offense to anybody who likes them, but I'm just saying it's not really the greatest piece of reggae I've ever listened to. Nevertheless, J-Man got pretty upset. We've had our differences, and he'd honestly rather just toke up instead of being on my show. Because being on my show for four hours takes away four hours of his toking up time. So, so that's that. And I don't condone toking up, and that's why we have our differences. So he just does his thing, and he does it with Mr. Microphone, because Mr. Microphone's a jerk anyway. So I, I just do my show solo now. Oh, that's a that's a definite shame that they're gone. I'm gonna ah uh, whatever. I'm gonna probably miss them. Yeah, uh, uh, you'll get over it. Well, we're we're gonna need them for Attack of the Killer Moles though if we ever do that again, right? But we probably aren't. Uh, but but hey, you know if you ever wanna if you wanna revisit that, I can get it all together. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, the problem is is probably by that time, you know, J Man and Mr. Microphone, they're probably just gonna OD off toking so much. Oh yeah, because you know everybody ODs uh, by talking these days. That's yeah, like uh, most of Colorado's uh, population. I looked at their census rate recently, and it was zero. They're all they're all gone. <laughs> That's a whole state. <laughs> That's unbelievable news, there, Dakota. And I know it's totally unbelievable news. I, I don't it. believe it. No, no, trust me, you have to. It's I, I do, but I just so can't believe it. I, I speak only truths okay. and no falsehoods. Okay. Mm. So, and so do I. So how's it going, Poor Richard's Almanac peoples? Very good. Yeah? What's your take on uh, drug use? <laughs> you know you, okay, you know how like once you get really popular, you start doing drugs and you just like burn out and die? Um actually we don't condone drug use because lots of us know people who've been affected by it, like 
there's family members and friends and you know we're not we're not into that that's not a thing well that just means that we can expect you in the future and not you know yes yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> not dead yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there'll be no bonzos for us but what about craig here what about craig here Come on, we all know the stories about the guitar players who always go off and do weird things, funky substances and things like that. I don't know. <laughs> he kisses cats. <laughs> he kisses cats. <laughs> he kisses cats. <laughs> is that a hallucinogenic now? <laughs> the only drug I'll ever need is cats. <laughs> By the mouthful? What is, is that, that what they call it nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think we're having a bit too much fun. Let's uh, bring it down. And be more Seriously. monotoned. Guys, I have Seriously. a cat sweater. You have a cat sweater. I have a sweater. Is it a made of cats? Has, no, it's not made of cats. Then how is it a cat it's sweater? It's knitted and it has cats on it. Well, then it's bright a sweater pink. with a cat on it. It's, it's bright, a cat bright sweater. Bright purple. I have a cat. Hello. I Sorry. Have I'm just gonna be honest right now. I don't believe her story at all. I'm pretty sure she's been killing off the strays and making sweaters out of their skin. No, I, I think I've seen her doing it too. Oh <laughs> wow, disgusting. Yeah, kind of like you're uh, starving kids in Africa, right, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Craig's a horrible person. He likes to starve children and send them to Africa. What? Oh, I, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I I bet that is a lie. I don't believe her. She is an enforcer, oh, she, but she's, she's also a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Compulsive liar at that point. Whoa. Stop throwing a mic at me. <laughs> well, I'm just doing the uh, good old. Uh, I'm just gonna do it again. Okay. I I don't have it. No. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I just wanted to scare Andy. I guess that that was my goal there. Uh, do you Success. guys? What's that? Success. It, it was very successful, I think. We'll probably hear more about it on YouTube. That's just going to be the fun fact or something. Edit that in, Aaron. You're uh, you're the editor. So. I don't care. Can't hear her. <laughs> no one can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're like, what are you guys hoping for in the future after Sunday? Like, what is the best outcome possible? That could, you you could you could possibly imagine. Sorry, I'm slipping over words. But ne near future or, or like, let's go with super near future. future. Okay, well, coming up, we are playing at Agri Fair coming up on August the first, six thirty. Um, we're also playing again down at Black Mountain Ranch this year as well. So we have a couple of gigs lined up for the summer. Um, we have been looking into, you know, l working on some more originals and uh, getting towards uh, releasing an album. So you guys don't have an actual, like, album just yet? No. Alright, well I hope to see it in the future, or else I'm gonna hunt you down. <laughs> just like the way that Shay hunts straight cats and things like that. And Craig and uh, I think, I think, not. I think the best possible outcome for immediately after Sunday would be a whole bunch more fans. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably. I, I would assume that you guys are gonna get a lot of fans, but, you know, Flea Market's kind of a different crowd. Everybody's kind of doing their own thing, shopping. So we'll, we'll hope for the best. They'll though. all want discounts to your shows. <laughs> you guys are pretty good. Can I get like, I don't know, 100% off? <laughs> Is that free? No, it's 100% off. <laughs> Not, <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. It's like half the, half the deals for double the price. Sha sham. Shams. Shammies. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to end that. Well, we're coming to the final segment of our show, but just to let every all of our listeners know that next week we also have an interview with Sonder. Um, yeah, so let's just play one of their songs here. It's called Common House. If, you, if you're listening to our previous episodes, uh, Andrew and I were talking about stuff and he liked the song, so we're going to play it one more time. Alright, we're going to the uh, closing segments of our right, show. From here we're so, basically here we talk about our contact information, things like that. Uh, and as well, for those that are listening, we are the Generations That Show, here with poor Richard's Almanac. I think I butchered that again, but that's alright. No, nope, you got it this time. Uh, almanac? Almanac. Almanac. <laughs> almanac, that's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> But uh, basically, we're the Generation Z show broadcasting from UFE to the Fraser Valley on 101.7 FM. I say that a lot, so now I got a roll of it. Yep. 
So, do you guys have any final messages, announcements, thoughts, or just, uh, you know, everyone should vibes come out that you to, want to shout out? Everyone should come out to AgriFair on August 1st at 6.30 to watch us play. As well as tomorrow, Sunday at 10 o'clock, we will be playing the flea market. Also, thank you very much for the Generation Z show, as well as Chuck's Boogity Blue show for having us today. Um, we have a Facebook page, so you just type us up as Poor Richard's Almanac. It's not that difficult. Uh, we have a YouTube page, which is also Poor Richard's Almanac. We'll have the links up for you in Aaron's YouTube video. And if you're really interested, you could follow mine and Austin's Instagrams or Twitters. I probably, I, I probably wouldn't want to, just because your selfies was sassy. And it's only like once. That. It's only once? It only happened once. Uh, quick question, so the show that you're doing at the Agri-Fair, Agri -fair? Yes. Agri fair okay, where's the stage going to be at? Is that going to be the big giant one uh, that I they think, usually have? Um, from what I'm told, the way it's going to be set up this year is there'll be a community stage more in the center of the thing, and that'll be where we're playing, and then there's a big stage out in the back for um, the really big name acts and the headlining shows. Okay, well, we'll look out for that, and hopefully everyone else does too. Alright, now for the Generation Z show contact information. You guys can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash show. Once again, that's facebook.com slash show. You can also contact us via email at the show at gmail.com. Sorry, there's a lot of links going through my head now. <laughs> you can also find us on YouTube. You can reassure yourself because I'm not 100% sure if this is the actual link, but... You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash show or just look it up. Uh, we're not the kid that raps in Seattle, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's a guy who calls himself Gen Z, and I don't know what the relation or the meaning behind that, but it's fine. Does he call himself Gen, does he call himself Gen Z or does he call himself Gen Z? Actually, that's a good question. I don't listen to if his he's rap, in the, If he's in Seattle, he should be calling himself Gen Z. It's true. If he's in Canada, he should call himself Gen Z. There you go, we're the original. Um, but yeah, so you can also contact us. Uh, actually, that is our contact information, thank you. <laughs> Andy, you wanted to say something. Oh, yeah, I just checked on YouTube if your, the link that you just gave out was right, and it's not. So you can probably find it on our Facebook page, or just look up the Gen Generation Z show, uh, and it's like the second one, you, ha you see your giant logo, just subscribe there, and you should be alright. What does your logo look like? Well, it's look it looks like a gen with a giant Z behind it. It's really cool. Dakota, Dakota made it. Yeah, I, I worked really hard on Photoshop for about like 10 minutes, and then um, I was like, wow, this is really good. And Andy was like, yeah, I agree, and that's what happened. It's a great story. I tell my kids it. I don't have kids. Yeah, and don't forget we're at, we're unemployed now, so uh, you can hire us and make stuff. Anyways, uh, we want to shout out to Connor Gilmore who designed our shirts, whoop, whoop. and uh, Aaron Pilla who's our videographer, and whoop, she's whoop. right there taking our video, and she's pretty cool. That's why I hired her. Um, she doesn't get paid though, so don't get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> But it's great that she comes out and helps and does the editing and everything that I don't necessarily want to do. So it's it's great. We love you, Erin. Uh-huh. She's right behind me and she uh, sarcastically said, uh-huh. You're keeping that in, by the way. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Well, it looks like we have uh, seven minutes left. I have a story about cats. Oh, sure. Let's hear it. Okay, I, this isn't... I, I'm sure many of you people have heard this story before. I can't remember where I heard it. Or it kind of goes like this. Hold on, though. We just have to intro you in. Johnny K. Johnny. I can't see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Kind of goes like this, somewhat. Okay. This is the difference between cats and dogs and how they think. Okay. And I'm sure many of you, if not most of you, if not all of you, um, will understand this. So a cat, oh sorry, let's start with the dogs. Yeah, let's start with the dogs. A dog, you know, it sees somebody taking care of it, feeding it, petting it, washing it. it. says, oh, this person must be a god. Right? The cat, on the other hand, sees somebody feeding it, petting it, 
housing it, taking care of it, and it says, oh, look at this, I must be a god. <laughs> you talking about, yeah, the, um, the cat's a little bit more egotistic. Sure. Yes. Okay, I, I, I feel like a fail, so I'm just going to put the mic down and be quiet. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a good opinion. Um, I highly respect you, Johnny. Thank you. It's Thank you. I, it's why I let you in the studio sometimes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Andy. Thank that's you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, one more thing that uh, that's happening in town today. There's a concert in Mill Lake. Uh, if you if you know where the big red building is, uh, I believe there's a concert there, and I am gonna go there. Um, Crystal Barrett is performing. Plus, every week there's going to be a concert during the summer, so you can check that out. Uh, there's a lot of music happening in Abbotsford, so uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, there's Jam and Jubilee. I believe you've performed. You guys performed there last year. Yeah, we Are did. Are you going to be there next this year too? No. Uh, the way Jam and Jubilee works is you play one summer, you take one summer off. So maybe you guys will see us next year. Oh, cool. We have a. Uh, a friend, a couple friends of ours are playing in Minnesota Nights at the after party for Jam Jubilee this year as well. Awesome. You know if that's all age or all ages or yeah. ranking up? The after parties, you just gotta look real nice. Jam and Jubilee is all ages. Awesome. Okay, what did that even mean? <laughs> but anyway, so the red building that Andy meant was actually the art building? Yeah, it's the Carrot and Art Gallery. You oh. knew it, but you call it the red building. But it is well, a red not building. Everyone, not building. everyone does, so I just say the red building. All right, and it's right before when you cross the uh, wooden bridge, not the dock that goes over where most people are fishing, but you know the rest. You'll find it. Or if you're walking the other direction before you get to the wooden bridge. <coughs> yeah. Kinda. Just just call me and ask for direct. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Or you could just um, you could follow us, VIA Real Life, and <laughs> we'll uh, take you there. It's not creepy at all. Yep, and lastly, before we come friends. to a close, uh, <laughs> uh, next week, July 5th, um, we're going to have the casinos that was here last week perform at uh, the Berry Beat Festival. So check that out. And I am doing some DJing at some other events, but I can't talk about it. But if you're interested, message me. So much confidentiality. I like it. Anyway, so we're going to play our outro, intro, slash everything that we like to use right about now. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Let's go. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 See ya. Thanks for having me. Yep, no worries. No worries. <laughs>